Hi, I'm Martha Kemp. I'm a recently retired art teacher and a painter. And I have four children and I'm a wonderful husband. And I live in Milton. And I've been trying to work on painting since I retired uh, just two years ago. Before I became an art teacher, um, I was always interested in art, even uh, I think some of my earliest memories are from kindergarten, um, drawing chalk stars on the kindergarten floor because I could do it and uh, for a game in the classroom and getting um, a nice new box of my own jumbo crayons, eight in a box. So I kind of remember that a lot. So that was like the earliest part. But I was always interested in art, and I think my greatest influences came junior high and then high school. One of the things that inspired me the most, I think, was in high school, when my high school art teacher uh, suggested that I apply for a scholarship program after school at the Museum of Fine Arts. And so I did, and I was accepted, and it was great because three afternoons a week, I'd get on the trolley and go to the Museum of Fine Arts and I would go meet with other public school students in the basement studios and we would work for like hours and then they'd bring us upstairs into the studio and sometimes we would uh, have lectures but mostly it was uh, actual hands-on studio work in the galleries and that really inspired me a lot. As an art teacher um, in your training and what you have to do to expose the kids uh, to a lot of different types of artwork and so your background has to be you know multifaceted and as, as I was teaching all those years um, I was dabbling in a lot of different things because you have to expose them to printmaking, working with clay, drawing, painting, all different kinds of media so uh, when I retired I decided what I really 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 wanted to do was to concentrate on one thing at a time um, and sort of step up my game in each of the each of the passions that I have. So watercolor was something that I had struggled with because um, a lot of people have a, a bit of control issues with it. And uh, I love the look of watercolors and I wanted to try to do that because I was spending a lot of time down along the South Shore, um, at, along the seashore. And it, it was, um, I just love nature. It's very inspiring to me. and. When I paint, I really try to capture the light and how it um, falls on different forms. I'm always interested in architectural forms as well. So I like that combination kind of, of uh, interesting architecture and nature. I have a lot of um, artists that have been in, famous artists that I admire, uh, who I've been traveling around the world trying to see the originals and um, having a lot of fun doing that. Depends on which thing I was working on. Um, when I was working in etchings a lot, I was looking a lot at Goya, so I was really happy to go to Spain and see a lot of that. Uh, when I was looking at, um, Impressionism is one of the styles that I, I enjoy. I like the color and the freshness of the Impressionist painters. And so I was really thrilled to go to Monet's uh, garden and, and go there. and paint after visiting that, so that was a lot of fun too. But locally, like the, the watercolors of Sargent, I thought are just stunning, and they always have that sparkle that you look for in a watercolor, and that's something that's hard to keep. And a lot of times when I was teaching, I would teach the students, you know, don't kill it, you know, because <laughs> sometimes you can overdo, and sometimes with watercolors, you have to really know when to stop, because it's very easy to, uh, muddy the waters, shall we say. <laughs> As I said, nature, uh, we love nature. My family has been to many of the national parks in, in our own country. Uh, we're planning one for California later on this year, and we're all looking forward to visiting a couple more parks that we've never been to. But um, I often will take photos. If I don't have time, I'll take photos and then work for my photos when I get home. Um, and I just, each one is so unique, like the towering pines of Acadia. Uh, and then you go out to Utah and you, you have the, uh, the red rocks and the arches and it's just fabulous. And Yellowstone had so many different amazing um, attributes that uh, I just found it awe-inspiring. And 
I have done a lot of national park work and I, I hope to, to do more. I actually was looking into doing a residency and I was accepted to do two of them last year and I just couldn't do it. So it didn't work out, but hopefully I'll be able to do that uh, in the near future. The national parks are, just speak to me so, so much. The, beyond just the, the beauty, um, it's almost a spiritual thing and it can give you such peace and joy. Um, it's almost like meditating. Uh, and you can really enjoy it yourself and with whoever you're with and your families. And it's, it's nice to, to visit these places that have been preserved because they, they are in danger. And uh, we're very fortunate that we've saved as much as we have. And we need to um, be caretakers of the parks. Um, and the, it's just such great resources for all kinds of uh, artists, writers, musicians, painters. It's really terrific. And for me to see, you know, the power of nature or the beauty or the quiet of nature and how I interpret it with my paints is uh, something I really enjoy doing. When I'm painting it, I'm really enjoying it. And I get in the zone and I might paint for days and days and really enjoy it. This painting is called Beach Grass and I, was, I painted this one down in Hull, along uh, Hull, Massachusetts, along Nantasket Beach. If you're familiar with Hull, it's down near the Alphabet Streets. And um, I was struck by the play of light and shadow along the coastline there with the fence in particular. And I'm al always interested in um, architectural things as well as natural things, so it kind of gives you a little bit of a a focus there as the uh, fence leads your eye up into the painting and brings you to those uh, the little cottages in the back there. It kind of caught my eye and I thought that was going to be fun and, and a bit of a challenge to kind of get the, the shadows the way I wanted. So I, I kind of, each painting that I do, it's almost like a discovery uh, process, you know. I'm, I'm trying to challenge myself to get better at particular things so that they come more easily. But everything doesn't go as you plan, and this is what I always used to tell my students, you have to pay attention to what's happening in front of you on the canvas because sometimes accidents happen and sometimes they're happy accidents. And if you pay attention, you can learn from your accidents and then control them and make them happen on purpose at a later date. So uh, I was, that was the challenge there. This painting is called Reflections, and this was a challenge that I set out for myself to try to really capture um, the freshness of the reflections underneath the boats and the docks. This was taken um, uh, from on site at uh, Hingham Harbor. That's where that was, if you know where that is. Um, so I had some fun with that. I enjoyed that. I don't use white paint when I paint with watercolors. Um, I think sometimes people say that you're a purist when you don't use white paint if you're a watercolor artist. I don't know if that's true, but um, I don't paint using white because it tends to make the paint more opaque and I try to keep it as transparent as I can. I do use mastic sometimes to save some whites um, and then you rub it off afterwards and that, that's kind of helpful, especially when I work something for a while. Um, if I block out white areas ahead of time, I can uh, preserve them and then go back in and touch them up after and keep it lighter. This painting is, uh, I call this one, the rocks at Cohasset. That's where the, uh, the setting for this painting was. And I really like the color of the rocks. That's what drew me to this scene. And um, the, the, uh, the contrasting color of the kind of reddish orange and the blue. Um, it's, I teach my students complementary colors, you know, so I kind of really like that combination there and, and I thought it was um, an interesting thing to do um, to up my game on texture. I really wanted to get better at um, showing texture in watercolor because I was used to painting in oils and I love painting in oils and I'm going to be doing that soon. That's why I'm shifting over to oils again. But um, when you paint in acrylics or oils, the paint is much, much thicker 
and the texture is rich and it's physical. You know, you, you can actually feel it and you can see it lift off the canvas. It has real thickness, you know, but in watercolor, it's very thin, transparent layers. So you have to create the illusion of um, the texture. And that's what I was trying to do with the rocks. This is actually not a watercolor. This is actually um, an acrylic painting that was done at a very special event that they have every year in Hull um, called um, Joe's, it is the name of the restaurant. That's where it's held. It's actually on the peninsula that goes out to Pemberton Pier. People are familiar with that. There's a little restaurant called Joe's and a lot of the members of the Hull Artists Group, which I'm a member of, um, will show up set up their easels and all over the beach there, wherever they want, and uh, have a great two-day weekend of uh, plein air painting. And that's, that's what that was from. I liked the blending of the colors in the sky and in the, in the water. I liked how it, I noticed how it changed from like the blue to the green and you know, the gradations of color in the sky is kind of nice. So I was, I was happy to do that. I was struggling with the boats because believe it or not, before I even started all these nautical type beach pictures, I really hadn't painted many boats in my life. So it was kind of like I had to learn about boats a little bit, you know, but, but no matter what you paint, it's, it's forms and it's color and it's how the light hits it. So no matter what it is, it's just think of it as forms and you're well on your way. I hope people will uh, come and enjoy the exhibit and perhaps take away uh, a little more appreciation for our own local natural surroundings and appreciate them when they visit the beaches this summer and as you go out through all the different seasons of the year. Uh, nature is a, a wonderful thing to enjoy and I hope it causes people to pause and to um, remember perhaps the times when they were at some of these spots and and to look a little bit more closely the next time they're, they're out along our seashore.